Hey there, today we're doing the knee lab. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a uh, muscle test. And then we're going to, I'm gonna show you a number of stability tests that you will need to know for your lab final. And then lastly, we'll talk about some knee braces. So first off, we're going to look at muscle testing. So the knee extends or straightens and flexes or bends. The quadriceps are in charge of extension. The hamstrings and the back of the thigh create flexion. So how we want to test that is the knee is a little bit unique in that as it fully extends, it has something called the screw home mechanism, where it basically locks in place and then it makes the knee very stable and strong when it's straight. So we don't want to test it with it all the way straight. So what we'll do instead is we'll bend the knee just a little bit, about 30 degrees, and then I want to make sure I'm going to line my hand up and my forearm with my force with her thigh. And so I push down here, <clears throat> and then I'll check the other side. And then the flexion, it's simplest just to do it in this position. We can have them lay on their stomach and, and uh, muscle test the hamstrings, but we can also go right here in this position, just have them pull down and don't let me pull out. And then check the other side, pull down. Again, I'm not checking with them bent all the way up underneath. I just want them to be somewhere out in mid range. So that's hamstrings and then pushing out is quadriceps. And then go ahead and lay on back to her. So now we're going to do some, some special tests, st testing the stability of her knee. So we have basically four main knee ligaments that give stability. We got one on the inside of the knee, the medial uh, MCL, the medial collateral ligament. And then on the outside, we had the lateral collateral ligament. And then deep inside the knee, you have two ligaments. One you're probably very familiar with called the ACL, the anterior cruciate ligament, and then the posterior cruciate ligament. The reason those are called the cruciates is they cross inside the knee. So we can test each one of those. So first off, one that's very commonly injured is the MCL because somebody falls into your leg as you're being tackled or maybe being slide tackled playing uh, soccer. And this ligament provides stability in this plane. So how we test that is we just provide a fulcrum with our hand and then at the distal end, at the ankle, I'm just gonna provide a lateral force and that's very stable there. And then I bend up to about 30 degrees and you'll see it move just a little bit more there. If I have a knee that's very loose and full extension, then I know we got a pretty loose knee. If it's stable here and a little loose here, then it's gonna, gonna be a lot more uh, stable there and I'm not concerned about other ligaments being involved. And then the other side of the knee, the lateral collateral, the LCL, attaches to the fibular head and what it does is it provides stability going into a varus position. So again, I'm gonna test it with it straight and then I'm gonna bend it and test it at 30 degrees and her knee is very stable. Of course, you're going to want to, for your video, your lab final video, test both legs. So that's the MCL and LCL. Now let's talk about the cruciates. So the anterior cruciate, its job is to prevent anterior translation of the tibia. So that's what we do, is we bend the knee to 90. This is called the anterior drawer. The tibia sits at about this angle, so I want to pull at about this angle. So I just grab behind. You wanna make sure that the hamstrings are nice and loose because if they're tight, they, you're gonna get a false reading. So I wanna be nice and loose, and I'm gonna pull forward. And again, I feel her knee is very stable in that position, okay? While we're in this position, now I can also test the posterior cruciate, the PCL. So its job is to prevent the tibia from going posteriorly. It acts as a check rein, stopping it right there. So again, what I'm doing is just taking and pushing on the front of the tibia, and I feel a nice solid stop. So we would have, 
if, uh, if that's stable, then I know that the PCL is not involved. And now we come down to, to this position, so we want to bend the knee just about that far. So with one hand, you just grab around the distal thigh. And with the other hand, you grab the proximal tibia, and you're going to do, to do a lockment. So again, this is testing the, the anterior cruciate ligament. So I'm here, and I'm just providing a little traction, or a, a little counter force, rather. Okay, so we're just going here. I'm trying to pull the, the tibia forward. I'm stabilizing the, the femur. And I feel a nice, solid stop. So that tells me that the ACL is not involved. And then the other test for the, the PCL is on this one, I'm gonna bend both legs up, and then I'm gonna stabilize at the, the distal tibia. And what you'll see is if the PCL is not, is it, if it's torn and it's not stable, you'll see it sag down. So I'm just gonna look across at the tibial tuberosities and they should be level. If one's high and one sag down low, and I know that we're, we've got a PCL sprain on our hands. Okay, so those are our, our special tests. And now I'll talk a little bit about knee bracing. So we have uh, about four different types of braces. The most common one you'll see if you have an acute knee injury is just a knee immobilizer. And what it's gonna do is it's going to lock the knee in place so that it won't buckle. If you've got a ligament that's damaged, it will provide the stability that you need. So this is very cheap. The problem with that is it hinders function because now it's hard to walk because you've got to be able to bend your knee as you swing it through. Usually we see these preoperatively if you have a ligament that's damaged we will see this brace post-operatively, like with an ACL reconstruction. Sometimes we'll wear these if they have an MCL sprain. And with this one, we can change the angle so that the knee will be allowed to bend. So there's some little clips on here that allow me to move and hinder a certain part of the range of motion. I can also lock this out so that it does not move so I can use it very much like the immobilizer. This is much more friendly, like sitting down in chapel. You don't want your knee straight. Those seats are tight. So you want to be able to bend your knee and allow your knee to bend. So this is a post-op brace is typically what we use that for. And then this brace is a functional brace. Again, it's just two hinges, one on each side. These are typically custom molded. And so they're custom fit to the athlete. And so it's made out of very strong, durable material. And so this is something like after you return to play from an ACL reconstruction. So that's a functional brace. And then lastly, we've got a prophylactic brace. These two look very similar in design. The uh, difference is this one's more off the shelf and it's not as durable. So this is kind of a... Uh, a medium, large, small type of an equation so that if you got a big leg, you get a large, you got a small leg, you get a small. And so then the other type of brace that we've got is just a, a little hinge brace. So like if somebody in a game uh, has a mild MCL sprain and they just need a little extra stability, then we can wrap this on real quick, put them back in the game. If their knee's not uh, entirely unstable and it's safe for them to return to play, so that's just a, a quick little hinge uh, neoprene sleeve that they can wear. All right, well, that's it for today's lab. We'll see you next time. Bye.